Welcome to the Commander Crew, a Magic the Gathering Commander YouTube channel where we ask the question, who's your commander? We want to thank you for watching our videos. You can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and hitting the bell notification icon. You can also go to thecommandercrew.com to check out our t-shirts, masks, pet hoodies, and other Commander Crew goodies. If you want to buy any of the cards seen in this video, be sure to click our TCG Player affiliate link in the show notes below. Lastly, you can help us out by heading to our official Patreon page and becoming a direct supporter of the channel. Now let's, now, go let's get to, to the video. video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What's up, everyone? It's your boy Eddie from the Commander Crew, and today we're discussing Orvar the All Form. We're going to do a deck tech on him. Orvar the All Form costs three and a blue for a 3-3 shapeshifter. It's a changeling, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, if it targets one or more other permanents you control, create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents. When a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard this card, create a token that's a copy of target permanent. That first ability is really what we're gonna be using to capitalize on our game plan. Our game plan is all about creating as many tokens of our permanents as we can and taking full advantage of all that has to offer whether we're copying our lands which is probably the biggest part of this to really ramp out or copying our wind cons and creating as many of them as we can to win as quickly as we can so first off let's discuss ramp we have arcane signet which costs two for an artifact that can tap and add one mana of any color in our commander's color identity. We have extra planar lens, which we can leverage with our snow islands and hopefully nobody else at the table is running snow islands, where we'll be able to take full advantage of that and double up our mana. We can use Felwar Stone to tap for one mana of any color a land and opponent controls could produce. We have Mana Crypt, of course, which will tap for two mana. We have Nyx Lotus. We're running a lot of blue permanents in this deck. And Nyx Lotus is going to be able to tap to add a color equal to the amount of devotion we have to that color. We have Peregrine Drake, which with all the copies we'll be making, we'll be able to untap a ton of lands and just ramp out as quickly as possible, potentially creating infinite mana. Then we have Primal Amulet, which is going to reduce the casting cost of our instants and sorcery spells. And then when it flips, it'll be able to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. And when that mana is spent to cast an instant or a sorcery, we get to copy that and choose new targets for the copy. We have Sapphire Medallion, which will also reduce the cost of our blue spells. Soul Ring, we all know what that one does. We have Thought Vessel, which can tap for one colorless mana, but it also gives you no maximum hand size. And we have Wayfarer's Bobble, which is that Commander's Quarter Special, where you can pay to tap it, sacrifice it, and search your library for a basic land. Next up, our card draw. We have Blue Sun's Zenith, Consecrated Sphinx, Kasima, which is a very new card, and this card is extremely relevant in this deck because we're going to be able to create a ton of landfall triggers to be able to draw an absolute obnoxious amount of cards off of this card. We have Mystic Confluence, which will allow us to draw cards, but in addition to that, we can leverage it for the targeted ability, or we can just use it to counter something. We have Mystic Remora, Pull From Tomorrow, Ristic Study, Seagate Restoration, which is a newer card from Commander Legends that will allow us to double our hand size and give us no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Search for Ascanta, which is pretty much card selection until you flip it. Once you flip it, you get a land that's able to draw you some non-creature, non-land spells. Stroke of Genius. The Magic Mirror, uh, which is a card that I like from Throne of Eldraine. That it's a bit expensive, but because of the amount of instants and sorceries that we're going to be thrown into our graveyard, it's definitely going to be worth it. The instants and sorceries reduce the casting cost of this spell. It gives us no maximum hand size, and at the beginning of each of our upkeeps, we put a knowledge counter onto the mirror and then draw a card for each knowledge counter on it. So over the course of the game, this can get pretty high up there and help us to draw a ton of cards. And lastly, Windfall. Then we have, of course, Mystical Tutor. And next up, Removal. For Removal, we have Cryptic Command, 
which has the added benefit of being able to target a permanent that we control to return it to our hand. And with Orvar, that's going to make a copy of the permanent that's on there. We have Fierce Guardianship. Imprisoned in the Moon is a card that I like a lot in this deck because we're going to be able to target it after having put it on somebody's creatures, land, or planeswalker. We can target it with one of our other targetable spells and make copies of this with Orvar on the battlefield to get other creatures, lands, or planeswalkers that our opponents control to be turned into colorless lands. We have Dwari Disruption, which we can either cast as an instant to counter something, or we can play the flip side of it and it enters as a tapped island, essentially. We have Mana Drain, of course, Narset's Reversal, Pungify, Rapid Hybridization, Raven Form, which is a new card from Kaldheim. It costs two and a blue to exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 1-1 blue bird creature token with flying, and it also has four tail for one. We have Sublime Epiphany, which is also another card that we'll be able to target one of our non-land permanents with. And lastly, we have Swan Song. Next up are board wipes. So we have Aether Gate, which with Orvar on the battlefield is really cool because we can return six non-land permanents to their owner's hands for five mana. But with Orvar on the battlefield, we can have one of those non-land permanents be a permanent that we control to make a copy of it, return our original to our hand, and hit five of our opponent's permanents and we just made a copy and have another one sitting in our hand. Amphin Mutineer. This card is amazing. We can cast it to exile up to one target non-salamander creature. Or we can cast it from our graveyard for its Encore ability. Also, while it's on the battlefield, if we target it with one of our target spells, we'll be able to make copies of it, exiling more of our opponent's creatures. Baral's Expertise does pretty much the same thing as Aethergate, but it hits three targets instead. Those targets can be artifacts or creatures, and it allows us to cast another spell out of our hand with converted mana cost four or less. Next up are targetable spells. So most of the spells that you're going to see here are going to target a permanent. So we have Argent Mutation, costs three mana to target permanent, becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn and we can draw a card. So it's basically a three mana cantrip at instant speed, but with Arvar on the battlefield, it's going to create a copy of whatever permanent we target, including lands, which is so crazy in this deck. Next up, Artificial Evolution, which essentially does the same thing with the card draw ability, but it does it for one mana. Clock Spinning also does it for one mana, targets any permanent, but it also has buyback for three, which means for four mana, we can create a copy of any permanent on the battlefield with Orvar out. Dream's Grip does the same thing, but it's going to tap or untap a permanent. So with this, we can pay the one blue. And with the island that we use to pay the one blue, we can untap that island, targeting the same island, untap that island, and make a copy of it. Now we have two mana and we spent essentially nothing. Enervate, two mana to tap target artifact, creature, or land, and then we get to cantrip at the beginning of the next upkeep. Giga Drouse, which can tap down a target permanent. It also has replicate for one, blue. Glamour Die, which costs two mana for an instant. And you can change the text of target spell or permanent by replacing all instances of one color with another word. But this one has retrace. Infuse, which can untap target artifact, creature, or land. And then you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Jolt, tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Mind Bend costs one to change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another or one basic land type with another. 
Mind games cost one and three with a buyback to tap target artifact creature or land. Moonlace, one mana. Target spell or permanent becomes colorless. Psychic puppetry, tap or untap target permanent for two mana. Teferi's Time Twist, you pay two to exile target permanent you control. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. If it enters the battlefield as a creature, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Thermal Flux, we can pay one, target non-snow permanent becomes snow until end of turn, or target snow permanent becomes non-snow until end of turn. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Trait Doctoring, this one is a sorcery. It's going to cost one to change the text of a target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word with another or one basic land type with another until end of turn. It also has cipher, which means we can use this, cipher it to a creature, attack, and use it again. We have twiddle, which you can pay one to tap or untap target artifact creature or land. Twitch, you can pay three. You may tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land, and then you draw a card. And lastly, Whim of Volrath. You pay one, it has a buyback of two, and you can change the text of target permanent by replacing all instances of one color word or basic land type with another until end of turn. These cards in any other deck would do nothing. But because of Orvar, with every single one of these for one, two, or three mana, you're able to create copies of the permanents that we have out on the battlefield. This is just crazy. Next up, we have Recursion. So for recursive spells, we have Archaeomancer, which costs two blue blue for one two, and when it enters the battlefield, you can return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. This is great with Orvar out because with our targetable spells, we can make copies of this and keep returning cards back to our hands. Next up, we have Snapcaster Mage. Cost two for a human with flash. And it says when Snapcaster Mage enters the battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. Now this card is absolutely terrific in any deck and there's no exclusion here with ours. Snapcaster Mage is going to be able to jump in at instant speed and allow us to choose one of our spells that are sitting in our graveyard, one of our targetable spells, and use it to target other spells to create additional copies as long as Orvar is out. Speaking of Orvar being out, let's move on to protection. We have Commander's Plate, which costs one, an equipped creature gets plus three plus three and has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity and you can equip for three. So with this card out, you're basically allowing yourself to only be able to be targeted by blue or colorless spells. This is very, very powerful and it's pretty cheap. For only four mana, once you equip it to your commander, you're going to be able to protect it from pretty much everything. Then we have Lightning Greaves, which will protect from literally everything because of Shroud. And Swift Foot Boots, which does the same thing, but it's hexproof instead. Next up, Clones. So one of the things that I keep saying is that we need to have Orvar out. And some of the cards that help us to do this outside of the protection spells are Clones. If we can make copies of Orvar, with cards like Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, we'll be able to keep at least one Orval all the time. Or if we have multiples, we generate multiple triggers whenever we cast any of our targetable spells. So speaking of Sakashima, you may have Sakashima enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a Thousand Faces other abilities, which include the legend rule does not apply to permanents you control. That's the part that's most important here, is we want to make sure that we can have copies of Orvar without losing any of them. Next up, we have Sakashima the Imposter, which essentially does the same thing, but we can return it to our hand. 
And lastly, we have Spark Double, which again, does the same thing. These are four mana spells that make copies of our commanders. These cards are amazing. Next up, Win Cons. So we have Aetherflux Reservoir, which of course is an auto-include in a deck like this. We're going to cast a ton of spells. We can get into some loops where we're casting infinite amounts of spells by creating infinite mana and casting our cards with buyback and continually making copies of our creatures, enchantments, lands, artifacts, pretty much anything, as long as it's a permanent, and then kill off our opponents with Aetherflux Reservoir. Our second win con is Agent of Treachery. If we can't get to that Aetherflux Reservoir, we can use Agent of Treachery in the same manner where we generate infinite mana, make a ton of copies of Agent of Treachery, and steal all of our opponent's permanents. They won't be able to come back from that. This also includes lands. And at the end step, we get to draw three cards for each copy of Agent that we have. Lastly, our lands. Our lands are pretty basic here. We have our Ancient Tomb. We have Command Beacon to make sure that we can always cast Orvar because it's going to get removed a lot. We have our Fetch Lands. We have Mystic Sanctuary, which enters untapped as long as you control three or more islands. And when it enters untapped, you can return an incident or sorcery from your graveyard to the top of your library. We have Nyctos Shrine, which does the same thing as the Nyx Lotus Artifact. We have Polluted Delta, which is another fetch land. Reliquary Tower to make sure that we have no max hand size because we are going to be drawing a ton of cards in this deck. Scolding Tarn, another fetch land. We have, of course, our Snow Islands, 21 of them. We have War Room, which allows us to pay three mana, pay one life because we're running a mono blue deck and draw a card. And then lastly, I know I skipped this at the very beginning of discussing lands, but we have Cloud Post. Cloud Post comes into play tapped, and you can add one mana for each Locust in play. Now, of course, Cloud Post is the only Locust in our deck, but the benefit here is that with our targetable spells and Orvar on the battlefield, we can make a ton of copies of this, and each of those copies tap for one mana for each locus in play. So if we target one of these once with Orvar in play, we have two lands that combined can generate for four mana. Three, we have three lands that combined can generate for nine mana. This is insane. We can make so much mana doing this. We can easily go infinite doing this. And our opponents have little ways to shut this down once we have enough copies. So that is Orvar. This is a deck I had a lot of fun building. I also had an extreme amount of fun playing, which I'm sure you'll see in one of our gameplay videos if you haven't already. Let us know what you think. Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our Patreon. And also, we did just revamp our website thecommandercrew.com and all our merch has our new logo attached to it so go and check that out i think you'll like it that's all for today guys and until next time take care